September 27th, 7.03 a.m., Wednesday, part two of Sexual Intimacy in Marriage, reads, It is deeply satisfying. Rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving deer and a grateful, graceful doe. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. His left hand is under my head, and oh, well, and his right hand embraces me. Song of Songs, chapter two, verse six. That's funny because at night I put my hand underneath the pillow and I stretch it underneath my wife's head. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And I, his right hand embraces me. It, 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 it's true. My left hand does that. My left hand does slide under my wife's head at night under the pillow and then my right hand embraces her wow that's crazy okay you're biblical i'm biblical oh gosh <laughs> okay studies have shown that couples who are happily married and enjoy sexual intimacy live long live long sorry studies have shown that couples who are happily married and enjoy sexual intimacy live long have lowered bl blood pressure and enjoy life more than couples who no longer make love this is not surprising making love to the one you love in a loving environment protected by covenant watched over by an approving god is bound to be good for you not just physically but emotionally and spiritually physically because it releases tensions some couples burst into spontaneous laughter after orgasm emotionally because it is a supreme expression of your love and spiritually because it binds you together okay so i have something to say about that easy easy <laughs> easy what the heck you might also burst into tears because you're holding in so much emotions and it is a, a it is an emotional release i i believe so yeah oh. i had to throw that in Sorry. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh are you sure this is a christian book no <laughs> <laughs> help me lord okay miss janadu you're making us blush over here <laughs> all right all right next uh, says it is a sense it is an essential ingredient of marriage first Corinthians chapter 7 verses 2 to 5 like you go ahead and read it babe okay let each man have his own wife and let each wife have her own husband let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her her conjugal right likewise also the wife of her husband the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does and likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except, except with consent for a time, <laughs> that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Ooh, that's a loaded one right there. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so I'm gonna hit on this. So, okay, so I use well, okay, well, I can say I because that it is. So I used to uh, struggle with um, uh, gosh, should I say it? I this just, is a straight talk about okay, sex. Okay, I used to struggle with like excessive masturbation. <laughs> um, and uh, so, and, and even even when I was married in my early stages of marriage, um, my wife's like, "What?" <laughs> so, what happened was, is there's been a few times where I've told you that I was fasting. Remember, I told you when you wanted to have sex. Mm -hmm. So, she was she was wanting to have sex, and I told her, and I told her I was fasting, and she thought that I was. And actually, you did. You thought that I was like. I was rejecting her, rejecting you, mm -hmm. but in re or that I was using it, using it as an ex as an excuse mm -hmm. to not want to have sex with her. But in fact, I was struggling with that 
with that because I I hadn't dealt completely with that spirit, with those spirits and, and deliverance and the word and just walking in holiness and all that. Um, like I said, it's a process. Uh, our salvation is a process as so is getting rid of spirits and demons and old habits. So, um, so this is what I, I believe personally. I, I mean, there's a lot of, like my wife said, that there's a lot of ways we could hit on this. But for me, um, I would, it was, you, you know, it was to help me. And that's why I was fasting was because I didn't want to bring to the bedchamber those spirits. And, and that's what it, what, it, what it would ultimately do. Because if you're carrying lust and perversion spirits, and you're having sex with your wife, mm. eventually she's gonna pick them up too. Mm -hmm. And then what's gonna happen is, is you don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? You, you, and then you can ultimately be responsible. Well, we're not responsible for our, for our spouse's uh, salvation, but we are responsible for their, for their relationship with Christ. Mm. So when we're having sex with our, with our spouse, and we haven't taken care of those sex demons or lust and perversion spirits. Mm -hmm. You could be bringing them in, into the into the into the bed and, and wanting to do things in in the bed that are not uh, like posi different positions and things that that are not pleasing to God. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure by the by the um, material that we're reading that um, Catherine Genado is going to touch on this probably in this chapter. Actually, we haven't read it, we haven't read this, but I'm, I'm by the spirit, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to touch on this. Um, so, anyways, so what he's saying here is that uh, let each man have his own wife and let his wife have his own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her heart. Uh, likewise, also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And that doesn't mean that. So, a lot of people that, that would be listening to this would think, well, what do you mean she doesn't have the right to her husband, but her husband does? Well, you need to, you need to let, uh, like, you need to read it in context. And that's what we're going to do. So, it says, and likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So, what it's saying is, is that, okay. So, it, it, it even goes even deeper because, for one, a Christian. Our body doesn't belong to us uh, us any longer, right? It belongs to, to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So now, when you come in marriage, your body doesn't belong to you, but it belongs to your wife. So you're, all we are is we're just an instrument. And that's what it says. We're just like a tool for God. And like that's what I think, and that's why I think the word comes uh, that we're instruments of righteousness. <laughs> right. Because we're, cause we're like, okay, okay, here, this body is for the Lord. This body is for my wife. So... In reality, it's our responsibility to keep um, the body healthy, yeah. to keep the body um, uh, pure and holy. Um, because like we just read in the last chapter, when you're having sex with your partner, you're you're becoming one with them, right? Right. And so that so that you can you can ultimately transfer spirits through sex. Yeah. And um, and I'm not gonna get into that. But we're going to keep reading. So do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may be that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. So fasting and prayer is for many things. It's to hear the Lord. It's to, um, you know, the Bible says that it, um, the demons didn't come out only by fasting and prayer as well. And that's where I was at with my when we when we first met or when we first got married eight years ago. Um, I was like, well. I need to uh, I need to work on this because it was something that I brought into the marriage. I brought into the marriage. Uh, well, you know, you're you're you know you're not supposed to be bringing into the marriage uh, spirits and, and and bondage and baggage, right? Mm. But unfortunately, uh, we do and people do, mm -hmm. and that's why they call it baggage. <laughs> like like she's got too much baggage or he's got too much baggage, right? Um, that's what they say in America anyways, baggage. You're, you're bringing things into the marriage that shouldn't be brought into the marriage. Even though you think that they're taken care of or that they're going to be different now that you're married, that's not the case. You're, so that's why deliverance is so important. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm talking about you, you could cast the demons out of yourself. I mean, you, 
you could say, you know, I command the spirit of lust of perversion to come out of me in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you just keep coming after it. And you're going to start feeling something rising up in your body that's that's not of the Lord and, and leaving your body. And then, of course, um, the word of God is what cleanses us and cleans us and washes us and purifies us. It's the Bible mm -hmm. and it's the word. But so what we're talking about here is fasting for a time. And that's what it says with consent for a time that you may, may give yourselves to fasting prayer. So you don't necessarily have to tell your spouse why you're fasting, I don't think, unless it's unless it becomes an issue, like where it's causing problems in the marriage, mm -hmm. or like, you know, I really need to know why you're fasting so that way I could pray with you, mm -hmm. or whatever, but, so that's another thing too, is you don't wanna, you don't wanna be doing things in secret either in your marriage. Mm -hmm. You wanna let the, let the other person know, just like I told my wife the other day, I felt, those spirits were trying to come back to me. Like I felt, and it's weird because our church, uh, in New Covenant Church, um, we're actually, our Bible studies have been on um, sexual morality and yeah. all that for, out of Corinthians, First Corinthians for the last few weeks. They've been hitting on that. And it's like, I wasn't struggling with it, but then all of a sudden through those teachings, I'm struggling with that spirit. I'm like, what? What? Like they're trying to come back, knock on my door, right? So I told my wife um, the other day, I says, you know what, I need deliverance. I need deliverance. She looked at me and she's like, for what? And I told her. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, those spirits are trying to come back. They're trying to trying to come back into me, right? So she started doing deliverance on me right there on the car on the way to, to go have lunch. And I'm yawning away. I was yawning away like crazy. Like big, huge yawns were coming out of me. Um, and I felt like I got free of it. And and, and now, um, like the Bible says in Second Samuel chapter two, 22, verse 38, that we're to pursue our enemies and overtake them and don't look back until they're under our feet. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's what we're doing right now is we're, we're pursuing, we're exposing the enemy, we're exposing the enemy's tactics and, and schemes, and we're figuring out how to defeat him, how to overcome him in these areas so that our marriage our marriages and our relationships can be better yeah. with with one another. Um, so, and then it says here, I'll just finish. I feel like my wife has something to say. So it says here, do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. And that's exactly what it is. Actually, here it is. It's out of 1 Corinthians. That's what actually we were reading in our Bible study. We're reading this exact exact stuff, so God will always confirm His word. Um, did you want to share anything? Yeah, I touched on it this last week. Um, last this last video was women are are very notorious for depriving their husbands of sex to punish them, and that's a sin. This is against the word of God um, because we're um, that is worse. That's a ministry. I want you to look at sex as a ministry. Um, you're ministering to your husband when you're having sexual relationships with him, and you're, it's a ministry. You, if you look at it that way, instead of the Hollywood way, which is impurity, sexual perversion, and lust, you know, um, you gotta you gotta look at sex differently because. We've all been corrupted by the way the world thinks, and it's no. We're we're supposed to minister to our husbands, to our wives. It's a ministry. And I want to hit on something too. I feel I feel the Lord on this. So, um, I, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but I just feel like saying this. So, and another thing too is I know that fantasy comes even in even in sex. So. You could be having sex with your spouse and thinking about somebody else mm -hmm. while you're having sex. Mm -hmm. And if that's happening to you, you really need to you really need to to cast that spirit out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying you don't love your spouse. I'm not saying you don't love your your husband. You don't love your wife. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that if you're thinking about somebody else while you're having sex, mm -hmm. you're thinking about another man or another woman mm -hmm. or a something else, whatever it is. Um, that's that is that is sin. That's sin. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And and and, and I think that's even really worse sin because you're you're having an intimate relation with your wife in bed and you're thinking about another woman or another man. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's just wrong um, in so many ways. So It's adultery. It, 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 it's adultery. It's, yeah, it's adultery. adultery. So, yeah. and, and, and I'm not saying that it's, and if it's happening to you, don't feel like... Uh, like you're going to hell, or, you're, or something's really wrong, bad with you, or wrong with you. Because if you're if you're a child of God and you're and you're saved, and you're you know you're saved, or you're a child of God, um, it, it, what those are, they're spirits, okay? Mm. They're spirits. They're they those are not. That is not you, okay? Because you, I know, I don't even know you. Maybe, maybe I don't even know you. Maybe you're someone I've never met before, mm. but you were created in the image of God. And God created you before the foundations of the world to stand holy and blameless before God. Yeah. He did not create you to fantasize about other women and men while you're having intimate relations with your husband or wife. You know, those are spirits. So I suggest if that's happening to call a de- find a deliverance minister near you um, that, that is a real true deliverance minister that knows how to cast out spirits mm-hmm. and that can, can counsel you in that area. Um, actually, my wife and I have a deliverance ministry um, that we could we would be willing to help you with since we're we're, we're dealing with this uh, issue right now uh, online. Um, it would be totally um, uh, it would be we won't say you know it would be confidential. Yeah. Um, you could call us if, if you're a married couple and you guys are struggling with that, even if you guys are pastors or. Or, um, or, leaders. or leaders in the church, mm-hmm. don't feel embarrassed or feel that you have to, um, it's, it's something that you guys have to work out between you. We, we are here for you. We are here to help you, um, help you overcome these areas because we've overcome them ourselves and we're still overcoming them. We're, it's, a, it's a daily process. We're, we're, we're in this together with you guys and we're fighting together the good fight of faith. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just continue to... Um, to keep reading here, and I think that are you ready? To, are you ready? Oh, oh, my wife's got something else. Hold on. Okay, so a lot of people get married thinking that that will take care of their lust demon. Say and that again. Oh. A lot of people get married thinking that will take care of their lust demon. Mm-hmm. That will not get rid of your lust demon. You oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They think if you get married, and then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna masturbate and and lust and be perverted and. All these things that it's just because you're going to have someone to have sex with. Right. But that's not the case. No. <laughs> what people don't realize is that you're having sex with a demon. Yeah, we don't want to talk like that, though. That, yeah, I mean, it's, to, well, yeah, that's true. You are. You're having. It, I mean, you're not having sex with a demon. You're having sex with a spirit. It, that's, it, it's a demon. It, it is a demon, but. You, <laughs> but, yeah. So, anyways, we, we already talked on how to. Um, how to, how to get deliverance, you can call us um, and stuff like that. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them on the comments. And, or if you want to call, contact us, there's an email you can contact us. There's ways to contact us through our YouTube channel. So, all right. So it says here, this is very clear. Um, when you choose to marry, you choose to give away your body. It no longer belongs to you, but to your covenant spouse. You are not to have a headache. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, women always go when a man wants to approach her, or your husband. Wants, oh, I have a headache. <laughs> you know. Oh, really? They make excuses, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's Lo- one of them. Okay, love making will soon get rid of it. Um, I love making will soon get rid of it. <laughs> Jeez, Catherine Genadu. Jeez. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. The fact is, if you are not living in harmony on a day-to-day basis, if you are harboring grudges and resentment, uh uh-oh, here we go, it will be very difficult for you to make love. So we need to touch on that. So if there's any uh, harboring grudges or resentment in the relationship, it will be very difficult to make love. So those are also spirits. Um, those are also spirits, resentment, and uh, re- rejection is what that is what that ultimately is, harboring grudge, grudges. Um, so, uh, if, if, again, if you need deliverance for these 
harboring grudges and resentment towards your spouse, contact us. You're welcome to contact us or find a deliverance minister near you. Uh, it will be very difficult for you to make love. You may try to fake it and go through the motions just to fulfill your obligation, but it would not be real. It can't be faked. Your spouse can read um, you like a book. He or she can easily discern whether or not your heart is in it. Some women are on a permanent fast. Jeez, <laughs> oh, help them, Lord. Who are they deceiving? Some men are too tired. Examine your hearts, gentlemen. Um, frankly, a sexless marriage is not a marriage at all. Uh, it is just an arrangement. You cannot have a marriage without sex. You are merely cohabiting. Mm. Sadly, sexual intimacy for many people is a chore, a dread, or simply non-existent. They resort to separate beds or even separate bedrooms. You know, I actually, um, my my grandma, but she wasn't really, they weren't serving the Lord, but they, they had a house, they had a beautiful home, and my grandma slept in one end of the house, and my grandpa slept on the other end of the house, and I literally, like, my grandpa worked for the post office, so he, his hours were, he'd get up super early in the morning, he'd be gone all day, so my grandma would get up, so she worked, my grandma worked nights. <laughs> Or she, my grandma, well, she worked, she worked too, but when she, my grandma had retired before my grandpa, but she, she had it planned out to where she was up all night long and then she would sleep in so, so that she didn't even have to see him at all. She would see him only when he came home from work. She, you know, but anyways, that, that's what they're talking about. We have to be careful not to do that. Um, so beloved, unless there is a physical sickness that is not your portion in the same way that we need to learn the language of love, we too uh, need to learn the art of lovemaking. Since our union is a lifetime commitment, um, we have plenty of time to practice. Um, we should grow in love and in lovemaking. And um, that is not only just for uh, covenant relationships, marriage, but in our walk with the Lord, that we should always be growing and um, an intimacy with the Lord. We should not be afraid to talk and ask each other what pleases you. So find out, find out uh, from your spouse, say, you know, what, what is it that you like? You know, you, and like you said, you'll end up, end up finding out, um, finding out it's just something that will happen in the bedroom. So what don't you like? Uh, we should not be afraid to experiment Neither should we be afraid to pray. Um, Holy Spirit, come and help this act of love to be deeply and mutually satisfying. <laughs> wow, I never did that before. That's crazy. Okay, each each <laughs> each can pray. Um, help me to satisfy my partner. If necessary, seek help, but be sure not to miss God's best for your union. Christian marriage should never sanction anything ungodly or pornographic. So, again, Christian marriage should never sanction anything ungodly or pornographic. So, you shouldn't be watching porn with your spouse, obviously, while you're having sex. Or you have to watch porn to, to get it on. Or you have to watch some kind of a show or movie that's going to get your spouse turned on. You know, especially... especially um, uh, especially like doing it on purpose, <laughs> putting a, putting a, putting a movie on with some hot, hot, hot women or something like that, you know, and before you're trying to get, trying to have sex with your husband and you throw, throw a movie on, you know, where there's, you know, your husband's going to get turned on or vice versa for your wife turning, putting on man movies and stuff like that. Um, you don't want to do that. For example, oral, okay. Oral sex is not for us. For example, oral sex is not for us. Uh, a mouth was made for eating, <laughs> and yes, for kissing, but that's all. Um, okay, I, I won't even go there on that one. But uh, I guess that's her opinion. So that's that's her opinion, and that's her opinion. So it, it is a mystery. There is no marriage in heaven. The earthly union 
points us to something more profound. Okay, so there's no marriage in heaven. Um, there's no marriage in heaven. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. The earthly union points us to something more profound. So, okay, there, what he, she's saying is, she's not saying that there's not. So we get married to the Lord and, and, and our marriage is with the Lord, but we're not. Uh, basically, you don't bring your marriage to heaven. Right. So the earthly union points us to something more profound, more mysterious. It is a picture of Christ and his bride. It points to the ultimate con consummation when every pure believer, whether male or female, single, married, widowed, or divorced, will be together with the Lord. You want to read these verses? Yeah. The two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Ephesians 5.32 let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints then he said to me right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb the spirit of the bride say come revelations 19 through 7, 7 through 9 2217. Go ahead. Are you, are you want to share? Um, no. Um, okay. It produces godly offspring. God seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. What does that mean? Treacherously? God seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. What does that mean? Do you know? Don't mistreat your wife. Don't mistreat your husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Behold. No, but why does it say it produces godly offspring? What does that have to do with? Oh, mistreating your spouse. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, because they're because they they can see it. Yeah, they can see it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. You're not gonna have your children are deeply impacted. I guess we have to touch on this. Uh -huh. Your children are deeply impacted by what they see in your marriage. Mm. How your marriage is is a is an example of what their marriage will be. So if you're mistreating, you're yelling, arguing in front of the children, you need to stop and take your problems behind closed doors. Don't do stuff like that in front of your kids because you, you hurt your you hurt your children. Mm. And so don't do that. Okay. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127.3. So, um, do you want to read this next part right here? Sure. Some people marry only so that they may have children. Their prime aim is marrying is to become mommy or daddy. This is not a valid reason for marriage. We, may, we marry for companionship, not procreation. Children are an added blessing, but they are a temporary blessing. In the fullness of time, they leave in order to cleave and start their own family. Mm -hmm. Then we are left together again. Someone has said the best thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. Children need a loving and secure environment uh, where mommy and daddy love each other, where the parents are privately naked but not ashamed and where the parents enjoy a happy and wholesome sexual relationship the lord will help us but here's a prayer for a husband and wife so um if you are uh watching this together as a married couple um, you're welcome to pray along with us this is a prayer uh for husband and wife so let's 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 pray say lord lord we commit our loving we commit to the best say lord lord <laughs> we commit our love making Lord, we commit our love making into your hands. Into your hands. We ask for grace. We ask for grace to love. To love. To cherish. To cherish. And to satisfy. And to satisfy each other. Each other. Now. Now. And throughout and our life together. Throughout our life together. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, awesome. So this is here's a uh, video nineteen. Here's a uh, a code for video nineteen. Um, and you could uh, t just type it in. It's not that long of a code. Um, 
it says here, when Reverend Kate Gennady and her husband got married, they decided that they would always sleep in the same bed. They determined that they would always work out their differences and apologize to each other when they did wrong. Reverend Kate and her whole family made a habit of apologizing whenever there was strife. We must explain why we are upset with each other in a loving way. It is important to bring things out into the open. And then here's another video, video 20, and there's the code. Uh, sexual intimacy in marriage is a big deal. It can be a difficult topic for couples to work out. A husband and wife must be careful to give attention and affection to each other even when life gets busy. Going away on vacation to spend time with each other can be a good way to get a break from your worries and problems so you can focus on the intimacy. Sexual intimacy in a marriage is God-ordained and is important to cement the marriage together. Um, okay, so uh, looks like this is, is going to be a two-part series. So uh, so we're going to do a review, sexual intimacy and marriage review. Read Song of Songs together. Um, actually, my wife and I have done that. Uh, we've read Song of Songs together. So actually, if you guys want to hear it, you guys can... Uh, you guys can just put Song of Songs and um, uh, actually, do you think, did we do it? Or if you if you wanna uh, if you wanna hear us read it, it's actually we read it already on a playlist on a different YouTube channel. Just uh, let us know in the comments and we can send it to you or post. Or actually, yeah. Just anyways. So we can that, post it in the description. We can post it in the description for married couples. Um, why should sex be confined to marriage? Um, well, I think we touched on that already that's that's pretty obvious it's, yeah it's sin to not confine sex to marriage <laughs> right it's sin not to confine sex to marriage number, uh, number three what are the things that can hinder satisfying love making um, resentment and anger resentment and anger yes uh, number four what can you do to improve this area spend more time with each other quality time quality time ask uh, what each other like likes are and dislikes are yeah um, for husbands do you understand your wife's menstrual cycle um, and then for wives do you understand your husband's physical needs okay so that is that's it for uh, chapter 14 oh wait I have, I have one more thing to say okay so, sorry I don't think we, we brought this up okay um, so if you want to what will destroy um, sexual intimacy in a marriage more than anything uh, will be pornography because you're getting satisfaction outside of sexual intimacy with your wife or husband and I know uh, a lot of men struggle with that but women struggle with it too uh, it's starting to become a problem for women too just because I think there's so much on the internet and and social media and all that so if you have a problem with this area please please get deliverance understand that it's it's a spiritual problem and you can be free of it people get free of it all the time and you you may be struggling for years with it and years with it you know what there's freedom for you there's freedom for all types of sexual sin and perversion and unfortunately having done deliverance for a year with my husband um that's 90 percent of the people who were coming for deliverance was this these issues and so please yeah. seek out help yeah the bible says uh to repent uh repent repent means to have a change of mind so it's all it is is having a change of mind and 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 having a change of mind is the bible says that we have to be renewed by the renewing of our minds uh, and it's through the Word of God so um, it's just change change your habits change if it's if it's something that is if it's something that is struggling you're struggling with then change your habits whatever your habits are change them focus on the Lord uh, the more that you focus on Christ it, the Bible says that in James 4 7 that if you draw close to God that he will draw close to you. And then it says right after that, to, to cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So we need to cleanse our hands and acknowledge that we're sinners before our righteous and holy God and ask for, ask for forgiveness. Find 
a, a new hat, find a new event avenue or a new, um, if, 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 if you're going, if, if there's an opportunity for you to sin and to do things you're not supposed to be doing, shut that door. Like, don't watch that or don't, don't watch that, that whatever it is that you're watching. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a porn chat, porn thing. It could be something that's, that's causing you to get, get aroused or whatever like that. Turn that stuff off. Um, don't go around that, right? Um, you know, we, we want to make sure the Bible says that, um, you can kick the demons out, uh, but they're going to try to come back and they actually, they will come back. They're not going to try. They will come back with more the worst. So I think more importantly, um, I think what we need to understand is that we need to have boundaries, set boundaries and know how to, uh, put up barricades in our life to where, you know, if you have to, uh, that say the trail that the demon comes down uh, to to knock on your door, destroy that trail. Don't let. Don't even let the trail. Remove the trail. <laughs> remove the demons and the trail, right? Remove everything and anything that has access. Yeah. Right to to your your, your mind, will, and, and our emotions, uh, and know that, like my wife said, there's um, there's freedom. There's deliverance. There's healing. There's uh, that's that word salvation in in Hebrew means prosperity. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means um, it means prosperity. It means salvation. It means deliverance. It means but like everything that's good. Mm -hmm. God is a good God, and He wants to see you set free, but you have to acknowledge your sin before him and lay your life down at the foot of the cross and and before you, you can lay your life down for somebody else you have to you have to love yourself you have to know how to love that's another playlist that I'm doing I'm, uh, the father's love on on the YouTube channel on the father's love how knowing the father's love knowing how knowing and understanding what the father's love is. Um, a lot of people, they were raised with fathers that were abusive, that were um, very critical, um, you know, and things like that. And, and that's how they, and when then, when they don't get their way um, with God, they blame him and they, and, they, and they cast judgment on him and they get critical with God and then they leave God because they feel rejected and you know what I mean? And that's not that's not God. See, the Bible says that the angel he comes like an angel of light, right? He he comes in like a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's he's gonna come like he's God. He's gonna act and look like he's God, but it's not God. It's a devil. So we have to know and understand who we are, who God is, who we are as children of God, and how to love Him because. Once we know how to love God and love the things of God, then we're going to be able to, we're going to truly, our, our marriages will, will skyrocket, boost, because, because you're, you're going to, it's, it's the fruit, it's fruit of the spirit. And it's, and not only that, it's intimacy. Uh, when you have intimacy with the Lord, it's like, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no change. There's no bondage any longer. It's, it's like, it's, it's a free, free, uh, it's a straight shot all right right to what you want right like god is god has already answered our prayers um like I, like he already knows the intentions of our heart he knows what we need and he's already answered them like we are already uh highly favored and blessed um you know we are healed we're set free we're delivered but we have to learn how to walk in it right and in, 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 in order to learn how to walk in it you have to know the word of god so stay focused that was another video I just did the other day. Um, stay focused, stay committed, stay in love, and, and, and remember intimacy is key. Amen? Yeah, I think you should do a, a deliverance prayer for anybody who's struggling with with these things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Might as well. That way they, All right. they can... Uh, okay, so uh, if you're struggling with any of these things... Um, 
Did you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. My wife can. My wife. I was gonna do it, but I just feel like the Lord. She, she's the one that brought it up. So my wife um, wants to go ahead. Go ahead. Babe. So if you're struggling with any sexual sin of any type, we're gonna do prayer right now. So Father, we repeat after me, Father. Father. I repent. I repent. And renounce. And renounce. All sexual immorality. All sexual immorality. Sexual fantasy. Sexual fantasy. Pornography. Pornography. Fornication. Fornication. Adultery. Adultery. Sexual fantasy. Sexual fantasies. Impure thoughts. Impure thoughts. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now and we now, command that spirit. We command that spirit. Those spirits that came in through pornography. The spirits that came in through pornography. To get out right now. To get out right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Get out every spirit that came in through pornography. Get out. Every spirit that came in through pornography. Get out. We break its assignment. We break its assignment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We come against every spirit. Of seduction. We come against every spirit of seduction. And lust. And lust. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. All sexual fantasies. All sexual fantasies. And impure thoughts. And impure thoughts. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that came in through adultery every spirit that came in through adultery or fornication or fornication get out in jesus name get out in jesus name we sever right now we sever right now all unga ungodly soul ties all ungodly soul ties to past to past present present uh partners partners outside of the marriage outside of the marriage we repent we repent and renounce and renounce Every relationship, every relationship we had, we had outside of holy matrimony, outside of holy matrimony, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we command every spirit of perversion, we command every spirit of perversion to come out in Jesus' to name, come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of homosexuality, every spirit of homosexuality, get out in Jesus, get name. out in the name of Jesus. Um, we also. Repent. Also repent. And renounce. And renounce. All social media. All social media. And illicit. And illicit. Pictures. Pictures. On social media. On social media. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We command every spirit. We command every spirit. That came in through social media. That came in through social media. To come out in Jesus' name. To come out in Jesus' name. We break those assignments of Jezebel. We break those assignments of Jezebel. Against the men and women of God. Against the men and women of God. We shall not bow. We shall not bow. To the altars of Baal. To the altars of Baal. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For anything. For anything. That is unholy. That is unholy. And impure. And impure. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was a great, uh, great study. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be studying chapter 15 titled Managing Money. Mm -hmm. So um, this is going to be a really good one. Um, so let's uh, make sure to watch tomorrow's video. And I actually, I haven't even read. Like I said, I don't read these unless... I read these the day of, so um, we'll be reading together and learning how to manage our money as, uh, as couples. So thank you so much. God bless you guys and have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.